What is going on guys, Jedi Unico here, and today we're back with some more Katoa Shoujo. What I care about right now is seeing what the hell is going to go on with this date that we have set up between my boy and Emmy. So, uh, ah, let's just jump into it, honestly, there's no need for an introduction. I wake with a start. Shit, what time is it? I glance at the clock, which reveals that I've been asleep for nearly an hour. Oh, thank goodness. I mean, his practice should be finishing up soon. I throw on some casual clothes and head for the track. Somehow I got the feeling that we won't be doing any fancy stuff for dinner. I mean, it doesn't strike me as a very fancy sort of person. Still, I suppose there's a lot I don't know about Emmy. Despite our newfound closeness, I still don't know... I still don't know her as well as I should. Ah, well, I have time for... I have time to fix that. To be honest, I'm looking forward to getting to know her more. I'm so caught up in my own thoughts that I hardly register that I'm already at the track. I mean, it's nowhere to be found. I don't even see any signs of the track team. Ugh, this could be embarrassing. I turn to head towards the girls' dormitory when I hear a shout. Hey, Hisao! Oh! <sighs> okay, okay. <sighs> I turn around to see Emmy making a beeline for me with a gym bag slung over her shoulder. She's changed into some decidedly more casual looking clothes, a pair of shorts and an olive green top. Her running blades have been replaced by more realistic looking legs that probably wouldn't fool anyone. Emmy doesn't seem to care about that, a fact which makes me smile. Hey, you came! I mean, I figured you would, but still. I suddenly found myself wrapped in a rather affectionate hug, and it proves to be impossible for me to keep what must be the world's largest grin off my face. <laughs> well, of course I came. I'd be crazy not to, right? Emmy ponders for a moment. You know, that's true. I mean, I'm pretty amazing after all. I shrug in response. I certainly think so. It's an offhand remark, which is why I'm surprised to see that it seems to have caught Emmy by surprise. She blushes and smiles warmly at me before planting a kiss on my lips. Now it's my turn to be surprised. Emmy steps back, registering her, resting her weight back on her heel, looking pleased with herself. My brain fumbles for an appropriate response. I should compliment you more often. <clears throat> Emmy laughs and gives me a playful shove. Jerk. I throw an arm around Emmy's shoulder and, and am pleased when she immediately leans into me as if it was the most natural thing in the world. So, where to? I'm not actually sure. Where do people go on dates around here anyway? That's a damn good question. I've got an idea. Why don't we just head down to the Oromar and grab something portable? Emmy's face brightens at this idea. A picnic! I think you're onto something, Hisao. Emmy snakes her arm around my waist and we begin to head for the front gate. I'm entirely unsure of what I'm meant to do in this situation, but at least Emmy seems to be equally clueless. Despite the relaxing feeling of being with Emmy, I still can't help feeling a little tense. What if I do something wrong? I'd hate to make my, I'd hate to make an ass out of myself. The trip to the Oromart is accompanied by Emmy by Emmy's chatter about how practice went. I keep quiet for the most part, merely enjoying the warmth of being around Emmy. We get a few odd looks from passerbys, but I don't mind. We end up buying some bread and instant noodles, realizing too late that we cannot actually cook the later in the latter in the park. Oh well, I'll make it for lunch or something. That'll work. The park is located after a brief loss of direction that I blame entirely on Emmy. She, of course, blames me. We find a spot underneath a tree and sit down. I lean back against the trunk. Emmy sits across from me. Ugh, oh, I guess we should have brought a blanket or something to sit down on, huh? Emmy shrugs. I don't mind. Neither do I. Emmy tosses me a package of bread and we dig in. Curry bread. Interesting. I guess I wasn't really paying attention to what I grabbed in the store. Hey, Hisao, you look like your bread's a little spicy. I shake my head, trying in vain to keep an image of manliness. Nah, it's hardly spicy at all. I see, I see. That must be why your face has gotten so red. Yes, exactly. The lack of spice has a... Got my blood up. Because of the disappointment. Emmy laughs and swallows the last of her bread. Well, if you can't handle it, I'll be glad to take it off your hands. Hey, just because you wolfed down yours so quickly doesn't mean I'm just going to give you mine. Emmy mock pouts, causing me to nearly choke on my bread with laughter. Aw, oh, come on, Hisao. Aren't you supposed to be concerned with making sure I've got enough to eat now? We're dating, you know. Though... Emmy looks troubled all of a sudden. I can't say I feel any different. Mm -hmm. 
What do you mean by that? What makes this a date? It's just what we would have done anyway, really. But this should feel different because before when we had lunch, we were friends, and now we're a level above friends. You sound like Rin. Laughter escapes and Emmy grins. Well, she might have put the, the well, she might have put the thought into my mind. We've talked about that sort of thing before. Really? About me? Not really, just stuff, really. Rand thinks that the change of a label from friend to girlfriend seems arbitrary most of the time. Like there's no difference between the two. I can think of at least one, you know. You don't tend to kiss your friends quite as much. For the second time today, Emmy blushes slightly and giggles. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Exactly. I'm always right about things like this. Emmy rolls her eyes and chuckles. Guess you're pretty smart, huh? I nod in agreement. Yep. Even Muto thinks so. He thinks I should go into some scientific study after graduation. Emmy raises an eyebrow. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm thinking I actually might just do that. Really, the more I consider the idea, the more it appeals to me. I make a mental note to look into it a little more closely. So, what are you thinking of doing after graduation? Still planning on running? Emmy shrugs, seeming almost a bit hesitant. I don't know. If I'm good enough and I can find a team, I guess. You mean you aren't sure? I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. Really? You probably should, you know. Graduation isn't that far off. Emmy fidgets a little nervously. Yeah, well, it's far enough, right? Besides, I've got other things to think about. The mis there's a mischievous flash behind Emmy's eyes, and I suddenly find myself gloriously pinned against the tree. Like making this a real date, right? I mean, if we don't kiss, then it's not a date at all, right? I suppose... Mm, Strawberries and curry. Not the best combination, but I don't think I mind. Emmy sits back on my legs and grins again. There. Science would approve, right? I have the oddest mental image of Motel nodding seriously and making a mark on some checklist. I can't help laughing at the idea. <laughs> well, I'll admit, this is the first time I ever witnessed a kiss being met with laughter. Should I feel offended? <laughs> no, no. I'm sure science approves. Emmy beams at me, and I find it increasingly difficult to keep my brain functioning properly. Oh, good! It's at this point that I notice that Emmy stole the remainder of my curry bread while I was otherwise occupied with images of teachers wielding clipboards. Hey! Emmy tries to look innocent, but considering she just crammed the last bits of my bread into her mouth, it doesn't appear to be working. Mm, sorry, couldn't resist. Thief! A shrug from my companion is all I get in response. You used your feminine wiles on me. I wasn't that hungry anyway, but I still feel that the point needs to be made. Emmy seems confused by the phrase feminine wiles, but the understanding dawns on her features after a moment's thought. Was it anything of the sort? You were laughing. Feminine wiles doesn't involve laughing. I guess I can't argue with that. That doesn't change your thievery. Emmy laughs at my injured tone and gives me a playful shove. Fine, you can have the instant noodles. Are you kidding? That stuff's terrible. If anything, you should definitely eat it as punishment. Another laugh from the girl sitting on my legs. Both of which have fallen asleep by now. I, uh, I twitch one leg to try waking up, which was the unintended effect of unbalancing Emmy, who falls to the side with a startled eep. Whoops, sorry about that. My legs fall asleep on me. Emmy remains on the ground, giggling. I stand up a little shaky, a little shakily, feeling the nerves in my legs return to normal. My eyes wander over the scenery before fixing on the figure of Emmy, who has yet to get up. Her hair is sprawled out around her head, her arms are spread and laughter is bubbling up through her mouth. Everything about Emmy seems condensed into this one image. Her energy, her spirit, her childish giggle. The urge to lay down on the grass with her rises swiftly from the back of my mind to the forefront of my thoughts, and indeed I'm convinced that I would love nothing more than to do just that. Unfortunately, the sun is set and it's probably time for us to get back to the dormitories. While Emmy may be happy to stay out here all night, I don't think I have that ability. Besides, homework soon beckons. It wouldn't make sense to start thinking about things like university and then slack off, would it? I extend a hand to, to Emmy to help her up. We should probably get going. Emmy makes a sour face. Uh, you're right. She grabs my preferred hand, and I pull her to her feet and into a hug. This time, I'm the one who kisses her. Unable to resist having Emmy against me. Seems a shame to leave, you know. 
Yeah, it does. But if we don't get back to school soon, we'll probably get into trouble. Emmy pokes me into the, in the ribs playfully. And you need to do your homework, I'm sure. Sadly, you're absolutely right. I throw my arm around her shoulders and we make the trek back to the school, accompanied by the occasional bouts of laughter as our conversation jumps from subject to subject. Everything from running to school to the peculiar way that one of the cafeteria workers smells. All too soon, we find ourselves outside of the girls' dormitory building. Well, I guess I'll be going then. I guess so, huh? Emmy grins at me again with that mischievous look. Are you going to be able to survive without me? I laugh. I'm sure I'll manage. How terrible! Aren't you supposed to say, th aren't you supposed to say something like, I'll be counting the seconds you're away? Nah, I don't think so. Emmy pulls me down into a quick goodbye kiss and steps back, looking unexpectedly shy. Thanks for dinner. I really had fun. Honestly, I did. So did I. I think we'll have to do it again sometime. Emmy laughs at my deadpan delivery and nods. See you bright and early tomorrow morning, right? You've got to run off that bread after all. Of course, despite the fact that you ate most of it. <laughs> yeah, despite that. See you later, Hisao. As Emmy turns to head inside, I notice something weird. Something so weird that I'm surprised I didn't notice it earlier. She's limping slightly, favoring the left leg. Hey, Emmy. Hmm? Is your leg okay? Emmy looks confused, or at least fakes confusion. What are you talking about? Your right leg. You're limping. There's the briefest flash of concern on Emmy's face. Either she didn't want me to know, or she didn't think I'd notice. Or, I prefer to think, she just didn't realize it. Oh, that. She shrugs casually. Must have gotten knocked a little out of alignment during the picnic. <laughs> no idea what, have caused, what would have caused that, though. I think back to being pinned under that tree. Ah, you should have told me. We could have stopped and fixed it, you know. Emmy waves a hand airily. Nah, it's not that big of a deal. Don't worry about it, okay, Hisao? It's fine. Why do I get the feeling that she's convincing herself as well as me? You know what? No, 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 no. Beforehand, I might have let it rest, but I am I am the boyfriend now, and we've seen this happen before, you know, she'll be very clearly hurt, but not acknowledge it, and, you know, as the boyfriend, I need to be able to put my foot down and say, hey, look, you can't just brush this off. She does it with me, so I need to do it with her, you know, it's a, it needs to be in mutual caring for each other. Are you absolutely sure? You don't want to go ahead and just adjust it before heading up the stairs? You could get hurt if you don't, right? I said it was fine, Hisao. Seriously, don't worry about it. I've got some experience in these matters after all. Yeah, I suppose so. Emmy grins reassuringly. Honestly, Hisao, I appreciate the concern, but I really am okay. Now really, I need to get going. <laughs> Your attempts to keep me around are doomed to fail. <laughs> of course. Just prolonging the goodbye, I suppose. Another grin lights up Emmy's face. Good night, Hisao. Good night. As she limps inside, I find myself hoping she's okay, despite her assurances that she's fine. I think I can call this a successful first date. Hell, any day that ends up with Emmy pinning me under, her, under a tree to kiss me can't be uh, can't be bad, can it? I head back to my room, mentally thank the gods that Kenji doesn't ambush me in the hallway, and get started on my homework. All right, we're gonna go with another one. We're gonna go with another um, <clears throat> another day here. Ah! The morning is far too early for my tastes. It doesn't help that I had trouble sleeping last night. There are simply too many things on my mind to think about. My mind refused to slow down. Instead, I replayed the rooftop, the park, and everything else over and over in my mind. There's a small part of my mind that is still paranoid that this has all been some kind of joke. That I'll meet up with Emmy at the track and she'll act like nothing happened yesterday. Pushing these thoughts to the back of my mind, I throw on my running clothes and open the door. Emmy's waiting for me with her usual smile. You're late. Or at least, you're not early today. Are you tired or something? I find myself ruefully rubbing the back of my head. Ugh, something like that, yeah. Lots to think about and all that. 
Emmy giggles at my mild understa understatement. Yeah, I didn't sleep that well either. I was actually glad you weren't early, because I wasn't early either. I wonder if the same thing kept us awake. The image of her weeping face passes through my mind. What kept you up? Emma's expression falters, but she quickly takes note of my curiosity and forces a smile. Nothing important. She's obviously not telling me something. The question is, should I press the issue? Something's clearly been bothering her for a while. I want to help her, but would it just come off as me being nosy? She's got to know I care about her, though. Are you sure? If something's bothering you, I'm here to help you sort it out. Emmy laughs, son, but it's not her usual laugh. There's an edge to it that almost seems bitter. <laughs> sort it out? I'm not sure it can be sorted out, Hisao. An almost grim smile crosses her lips. It's like a smile of resignation. I don't think you could help me anyway. That hurts. I don't want to say that it hurts to her, but it does. Doesn't she realize I want to be there for her when things go wrong? Well, I won't push you on the matter. But I'm here if you decide later that you'd like to talk about it. It might help. I can see the debate raging behind Emmy's eyes. It seems like she wants to tell me, but she's not sure whether or not she can. Hey, forget about it for now, okay? We've got running to do. The mention, the mention of running, something that she can handle, brings Emmy back to her usual self. Right! Hurry up and stretch out, Hisao. We've got to get moving. She takes off like a shot, far quicker than I'm used to. Still, I try to keep, I try to keep pace with her, recklessly testing my limits. It gives me a feeling of freedom, like my heart is no longer important. I find myself wanting to laugh, filled with the feeling of, mo of moving beyond what I once called my boundaries. The nurse's warnings to not overdo things echo in my mind, and I disregard them. This feeling I have, this willingness to risk a heart attack for something so trivial as running, feels out of character for me. But is it? Or rather, should it be? I've got a weak heart, sure. It'll never be capable of the kind of speed and endurance Emmy's capable of, though I probably wouldn't be able to get that good even if I had a healthy heart. As we round the final bend, I feel my legs screaming in protest, but for the first time, I ignore them. I accelerate to finish at a sprint, nearly catching up to Emmy. <laughs> that was never going to happen, of course. Still, I feel surprisingly good. Oh, sure, my legs feel like they're about to catch fire, and I'm having trouble staying upright, but <laughs> there's been a shift of some sort today. And it's all thanks to the girl running, and it's all thanks to the girl grinning at the finish line, waiting for me. Ugh, I felt a little faster than usual. My comment is met with a grin and a shrug. Can't have you think I was going too soft on you, now can I? But you managed to handle it just fine. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Still feeling the high from the run and moved by a surge of gratitude, I seize Emmy in a hug. Thanks. Really, I'm not just saying that. I'm in your debt. Emmy seems flustered by my words, squirming uncontrollably, uncomfortably. Don't be silly, Sal. Someone had to haul you out here, didn't they? <laughs> and it's not like you're going to do anything for me, right? I needed a running partner, remember? I shake my head, still pointedly not letting go of Emmy, who stops squirming and merely looks up at me with a quick, deepening blush that almost seems out of character. No, that's not true. You wanted a running partner, but you didn't need one. If I hadn't shown up the day after the festival, you'd still run, right? But, isn't, but it doesn't work the other way around. I only managed to make it out here a few times before the festival, and without you, I probably wouldn't have made it out, after, out at all after that. Emmy smiles at me and prods my chest with one finger. <laughs> you are pretty lazy, Hisao. Hey, I was giving you a compliment. Well, you're welcome, I guess. I'll pay you back somehow. Oh, uh, well... That's not necessary, you know? I mean, I kind of like you, Sal. And being able to run with you in the mornings isn't exactly a bad deal for me either, so... For someone who gets so much praise, she seems unused to gratitude. I can't think of anything else to say, so we fall silent. I become aware of Emmy's breathing, of the dampness of her clothing, and of the scent of her. Coming off of anyone else, it would stink. Coming off of Emmy, it fits her in a way nothing else could. Her skin is cool. Slick with sweat, and a breeze causes goosebumps to rise. Almost without thinking about it, I lean down and meet Emmy's mouth, which has already moved to meet my own. Her lips are soft, and she hums happily as we kiss, sending vibrations from her mouth to mine. There's a startling rightness to everything about this moment. We fit one another perfectly. 
The kiss ends and I finally let my arms drop back to my sides. Emmy's smiling warmly at me and giggles again. Come on, Isao, we better go see the nurse. Then it happens. As she turns to begin to walk, she gives out a tiny yelp and stumbles forward. Oh! Emmy! I leave to study her and notice with some concern that she's favoring the same leg as last night. Your leg? Emmy seems panicked and pushes away from me. It's fine! My expression must seem hurt, because she hastens to apologize. Sorry, sorry! Didn't mean to push you like that. I was just... She stumbles for something to say. It's nothing, really. Hey, don't worry about it. She's so flustered, I decide to shrug the whole thing off. But there's a cold feeling in the pit of my stomach that it won't go away. I try to step in and help her, and she pushed me away. Smiling, I shove those thoughts to the back of my mind and concentrate on Emmy. I just don't want you getting hurt. That's all. You don't have to worry about me, honest. I'm fine. Yes, you say that, but I don't believe you. Why won't you tell me what's wrong? It's like she gets offended by my trying to help. What am I supposed to make of that? I'm still trying to sort out what happened on the track as we arrive in front of the nurse's office. Emmy raises her hand to knock, hesitates, and turns toward me smiling guiltily. Hey, can you do me a favor? Of course. Can you tell the nurse that I'll see him later? I just remember that I've got some stuff to take care of before class. So, I really need to get moving. I peer at her closely, and she fidgets under my stare. Yeah, she's clearly just avoiding the nurse. That leg of hers. Well, whatever. I said I'd help, and so I will. But I'll make damn sure she sees the nurse before the day's out. Yeah, okay, I'll let him know. Dude, oh man. This is not good. Really, this is not good. So basically, what this is, is that it's presumably that um, beforehand the nurse was talking about if she like pushes herself too much, then there could be like the the friction of the uh, prosthetics could cause a leg to get cut or, you know, injured in some sort of way to where it can cause uh, an infection if the prosthetic is dirty which obviously if you get an infection from that that can be easily fatal and so i am kind of pissed that he saw right now because this is i mean it's it's a serious fucking thing like she can actually die from this if she keeps trying to put it off so you know if it comes down to it i will if it gives me an option i'm going to fucking push her to to see the nurse in this day. I'm not just going to let her walk off like that. Emmy mean, looks like I've just given her a pony on Christmas. Thank you so much. <clears throat> You're the best, Isao. I'm rewarded for my complicity in her lie by a kiss that makes it all worth it. Or so I tell myself. As Emmy heads out of the building, trying hard not to let her limp show, I knock on the door to the office. Ah, Isao, come in. I don't see Emmy with you. She's not sick again, is she? From the tone of his voice, I don't think the nurse is expecting me to say yes, she's ill. Uh, she said that she'd forgotten to do something, and so she had to skip out, but she'll see you later today. The nurse heaves an exasperated sigh. Honestly, that girl. Hmm? She's been avoiding me. Yesterday she was in and out of here without even taking off her prosthetics. Now this. Well, at least it's not just me who I... Well, well at least it's not just me Emmy doesn't want worrying. That's a comfort, I guess. Still, I feel like I should say something about her leg. I said I'd lie for her, but she really needs to see him. Now that I mention it, she was limping pretty badly today. And last night as well. The nurse's eyes narrows at the words last night. And what exactly were you two doing last night? We were, uh, on a date. The nurse raises his eyebrows if surprised. Really? Interesting. Huh? Oh, nothing. His gaze turns thoughtful, and then he grins at me. You don't think you could use some of that boyfriend charm to get her to come see me today, could you? Of course. I was planning on doing that anyway. I think she's really hurt and just pretending she isn't. Hmm. Yeah, she does do that. Afraid I'll make her stop running. Will you? I don't think I don't like to, but if it's bad enough that she's been limping, well, I guess I'll have to see what's wrong for myself before I make that call. I see. Emmy, not allowed to run? <laughs> Perish the thought. 
I don't know if she'd be able to function without running. No wonder she's reluctant to admit anything to admit anything's wrong. Well, I'll make sure she sees you. Good. Oh, and before I forget. He grins at me again in what feels like a vaguely threatening manner. Don't forget about don't forget that I know what medications you're on. You better be careful around Emmy. Got it? Wow, he looks serious too. Got it. Don't hurt Emmy. One dream of it. Grand! I'd hate for you to be my I'd hate for you to be late. Huh? Late, as in the late he saw Nakai. He frowns briefly, dissatisfied. It sounded better in my head. Well, at any rate. Get out of here before you miss your first class. You've got things to do, I'm sure. Shoo! As I leave, I notice the nurse pulling out his phone and dialing a number. Mako, your daughter's being a pain in the ass again. I better head back to my room, or really will be late. Hey, wasn't he supposed to check my heart rate? The lunch bell sounds and I bring myself out of the stupor I slipped into during the morning's classes. My lack of sleep last night, coupled with the increased pace of this morning's run, has, me, has left me a little exhausted. Despite that, I find myself skipping stairs up to the roof. There's a thrill of excitement now, in addition to the pleasure one gets from eating lunch with one's friends. True, both Emmy and Ren are still my friends, but Emmy has become more than that now. Ren is back in her usual spot on the roof, almost as if she'd never been absent. Feeling better, I take it? A raised eyebrow is my reward for speaking. Better than what? Uh, better than you felt yesterday? Rin gives my question some serious thought. I'm not sure. I think I might have felt rather good for, good for some of yesterday, but it's all fuzzy. Too much cold medicine? Well, I was asleep, and that usually is pretty good. But I can't remember what it feels like to be asleep because I'm not conscious for it. It's a real problem. Then again, if I knew how good it felt, I might not sleep anymore. But this was, but this way I keep trying, so I guess that's how I keep, that's how I can keep from being overtired. An eternal mystery to keep you asleep at night? Maybe mystery is the wrong word. Intangibility might be the proper way to describe it. I see. No, I don't see it all. I have no idea what she's talking about, but that's okay since I rarely do. Do you remember what falling asleep feels like? Like yesterday. Do you remember what you felt like sleeping yesterday? Well, I actually didn't get a lot of sleep yesterday. Hmm. Maybe that's because you remember subconsciously. Actually, I think I was worrying over about. Uh, I think I was worrying about Emmy. Doesn't Emmy worry enough about herself? I hadn't considered that, but it gave me pause. True, but she would. Uh, but she would ask for help if she. Uh. True, but would she ask for help if she needed it? Ren frowns, and I raise an eyebrow. Will I get a proper answer? Probably not. Is there something she should be asking for help with? Her leg, for starters. This seems to catch Rin's interest. Leg? It's hurt, but she won't see the nurse about it. Rin shakes her head in disapproval. You have to make her. Like she makes you need to go to class, for her own good. Otherwise, she could lose her leg again, and that's just too weird. Losing things twice? Especially if you don't find them again to begin with. Unless prosthetics are the same as finding something. But that's a different kind of loss, isn't it? I think so. Hmm. I wonder. Wonder what? Emmy seems to have snuck up on Rin and me, though Rin doesn't seem especially surprised, which is which is itself unsurprising, I suppose. Rin manages to sit herself upright quite expertly, throwing her upper body forward and using her momentum to right herself. Your leg. How's it feel? That earns me a frown and a bit of a glare. It's okay, I think. Not worth worrying about. Tell that to the nurse. He's quite insistent that you visit him, you know. Emmy pouts like I've just told her she's been grounded. He worries too much. It's not a big deal, just a little soreness. I try to resist rolling my eyes in exasperation. If it's nothing, then uh, if it's nothing, then you should have no problem seeing him, right? Emmy narrows her eyes suspiciously. Did he put you up to this? Well, maybe. A little. But that's not the point. I would have reminded you to see him anyway. It would be terrible to see you really hurt and not do anything about it. That'll make it worse. And I really don't want to see you hurt, you know. Call me crazy, but I kind of would prefer to see you happy and healthy. With each statement, Emmy's frown fades a little more. Until eventually she's grinning. Albeit a little shyly. Well, if you're going to put it that way, then I guess I'll have to see him. 
<laughs> Otherwise, you'll keep worrying, and then I'll never hear the end of it, right? That's right. I'll keep bugging you about it, and that might put a damper on our dates. How's the food, Hisao? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. How's your date, Hisao? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. Hisao, I think I'm ready to go all the what? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. See, it doesn't work that well. Emmy giggles at my high-pitched rendition of her own voice and gives me an affectionate shove. My voice isn't that high, jerk. I thought it was pretty accurate. <laughs> Poggers. Emmy and I stare at- oh, I just have to say that. Emmy and I stare at Rin for a while before I burst into laughter. Emmy crosses her arms and huffs, mock offended. You're both jerks. <laughs> Such vile calamities from you, young woman. I'm stunned that you would call me, of all people, a jerk. Honestly, I just... I don't know what to think. Emmy sticks her tongue out at me. You ass! So, Rin, how's the art club these days? Rin, seemingly as surprised by this sudden change of topic as I am, takes a minute to think before answering. I believe it's okay. Although Nomiya keeps, keep, uh, keeps telling me to work harder. But I don't think he understands my methods. He always struck me as slightly creepy. Rin ponders his statement for a while. I've never really noticed. But I don't pay much attention to him most days, so maybe that's why. How often do you meet? Thinking of joining Hisao? What? Nah, I've already decided to join a club. Really? Which one? Well, it's not really much of a club, to be honest. Oh, you joined the tea club? No, I, uh, joined the science club, I think. Emmy looks highly confused. We have a science club? Uh, not really. It's just me. He's <laughs> that's not a club. That's sitting in your room reading books. No, I mean, it's just me and Muto. I'm just the only student so far. Muto? Really? A thought strikes her. Oh, is that what you were talking about yesterday? Your meeting with Mateo? Yeah, that was our first meeting, I guess. Emmy giggles. Nerd. Hey, I can't help being clever. You know, I could have used your help years ago. You should have had your heart attack earlier in life, Isao. I laugh and then realize this is probably one of the very rare times I've laughed about my heart attack. Hindsight. Yeah. The ringing of the bell ends our conversation. Hmm. Guess we better go. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Rin. You too. Rin has apparently begun to doze off, so Emmy gives her a sharp bump. I almost had it. Sorry, but you need to go to class. I disagree, but maybe if I nap in class, I'll get it this time. Changing location is sometimes helpful for, helpful for that. For, ugh, I can't speak. Changing location is sometimes helpful for that sort of thing. Neither Emmy or I bother with asking it is. As we arrive at my classroom, Em gives me a quick kiss and heads down the hallway, right in tow. I turn to enter the classroom to be met by the duo of Shizune and Misha. Misha seems to be fighting a losing battle to keep from breaking into a fit of giggles while she translates Shizune's latest rant. Why? Well, we are pleased, nay thrilled to see how well you've managed to make new friends and forge relationships, and with such a cutie too, Hichan. I think that last part was probably Misha. We nevertheless feel compelled to politely remind you that public displays of, of, of affection are strictly, for, ugh, are strictly forbidden. Really? That's disappointing, Shichan. By section 8 of the Code of Conduct laid out in the student handbook. In this case, however, ign ignorance of the law may be your excuse as we are feeling lenient. And the paperwork required to punish the both of you would only add to the amount, to the already mountainous volume of work which confronts us, the sole members of the student council. And besides, you two are adorable together. Therefore, consider this a formal warning, and please refrain from such displays in the future. At least when Shizune can see you, Hichan. This whole spiel is patiently ridiculous that I can't help but reply in the same pompous manner. Well, I for one feel enlightened. I apologize profusely for my rash actions and will strive to contain my baser impulses, which, I fear, impel me towards such inappropriate displays of public affection. It is hardly my wish to burden an already overworked student council with such petty matters, and will do my best to make your lives easier in this matter in the future. At least, when she's in his watching. This last line is delivered with a wink to Misha, who finally loses control over laughter. <laughs> well said, Hichan! Chuckling a little myself, we enter the classroom. Class is uneventful, and after the, bell after the final bell rings, 
I find myself alone with Mata again. So, it looks like we've all assembled for the second meeting of the science club. Or is it the first? What do you think? Should we count yesterday as a meeting? Well, we did form the club yesterday, didn't we? That seems like a club business, so we can safely call yesterday a meeting. Mateo smiles in his usual stilted and awkward way. I wonder why the muscles of his face are just not shaped correctly to let him smile naturally. You really do have a knack for this, I think. Logical thought processes, that is. I guess so. A scientist speaks with with authority, Heisao. The answer here is yes, I do. When the world wants you to know, wants to know how it works, we tell it, even if all we've got is a decent hypothesis. But we must sound certain certain anyway, because we're the authorities on the subject, right? He chuckles to go along with his awkward smile at his awkward joke. I'm doing my best not to grimace, but I don't think I'm being too successful. That's entirely false, of course. We know a lot, sure, but nobody's an expert on how the world works. If only because nobody can be sure. With no certainty, there are no experts. But we like to pretend sometimes. There's some things we can be certain of, right? Yes, but no. We know gravity's there, for example. To illustrate, Mateo picks up to illustrate, Mateo picks up a pencil and drops it. See? Still there. But it's good to check every once in a while. That's why you'll still see see researchers mucking about with gravity. We're pretty sure we know how it works, but there's always a chance that something isn't how we think it is. So you check, and check, and check. That's science in a nutshell, Hisao. The whole time I've listened, feeling rather spellbound, Mattel seems to be really passionate about this stuff, I think. It's hard to tell sometimes. How the world works. How humans work. How the universe works. All these questions to be answered. And depending on what I go into, maybe I can even figure out a way to fix my heart. That said, I don't think that's a real priority for me. Besides, as we start discussing the book he gave me yesterday, I find myself more and more interested in that than my heart condition. Before we even realize it, an hour's gone by. Well, let's call this meeting over for now, okay? We'll have another meeting tomorrow, or uh, the day after. He considers this for a moment. Call the day after. I've got a lot of grading to do. Okay, see you then. As I exit the classroom, I realize that I don't really have anything to do tonight. I mean, I didn't make plans, so... I guess I'll go to the library. It beats doing homework in my room, anyway. The library always seems cooler than the rest of the building. Probably to keep the books from getting damaged by excess heat and humidity. Books are sturdy objects, but if you want to keep them in good condition, it takes a little effort. I've got several books that are so well worn the pages are barely clinging to the spine. It seems impossible for them to still be usable, but if you handle them with care... I make my way to the main desk, where I spot Yuko busying herself with something or another. She smiles at me as I enter and waves. Hello, Hisao. Good to see you again. What are you looking for this time? Nothing in particular, I guess. I just didn't really feel like going back to my room is all. Yuko nods. Well, if you're unoccupied, maybe you could help me look for something? Sure, what do you need? Yuko brings a finger to her lips and looks around fur furtively. She seems to be looking for eavesdroppers. Come closer. I take a few hesitant taps forward while feeling distinctly unnerved. Yuko lowers her voice to a confidential whisper. I'm on the trail of the Yamaku cat burglar. The what? Shh! The walls have ears, Hisao. Or they might. But listen, those missing books, remember them? Uh, yeah? Well, they aren't missing. They were stolen. I'm convinced of it. I remember you saying something of the sort earlier, but how do you know? Yuko leans in closer, and if possible, whispers even lower. Because I found one of his hiding places. You did what? Yuko looks triumphant. <laughs> found one of his stashes. It was under one of the stairwells in the boys' dorm. Three books I've been looking for, all there. I had suspected a thief before, but this proves it. So, did you take the books back? Yuko looks as if I've just suggested she walk around naked. Are you nuts? He can't know I'm onto him. He might go around and evade capture. Uh huh. So, what do you need my help with then? Yuko casts another glance around the library and leans in closer. You've got a spy for me. Spy? Yeah, like when you're in the dorms, you know? Keep an eye out for suspicious activity. What, con what constitutes suspicious anyway? I mean, Kenji's a pretty suspicious dude, but I'll wager he barely goes to class, much less sneaks into the library to pilfer books. Still, what's the harm in saying yes? It'll, uh, at the least, it'll get me out of this weird conversation. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. Yuko straightens up and claps excitedly. Great! Now hurry up and talk about something else in case someone comes in. How's the school treating you? 
uh, pretty well, actually. I've been running in the mornings with... <laughs> I mean, Iberazaki, right? Uh, yeah. How'd you know? I served you two in the tea house, remember? I deduced that if you're going to run with someone, it would probably be her. She looks pleased with herself. Impressive. Anyway, yeah, we've been running in the mornings. And, uh, we kind of started dating. Yuko claps her hands together excitedly. Really? That's great. I'll bet you two are great together. I love seeing people find one another like that, you know? I even thought to myself when you walked into the Shanghai that one time, I wonder if that kid will end up with one of those girls. Really? Yuko doesn't seem to notice my somewhat weirded out tone and nods affirmatively. Yup, I could tell that you wind up with one of them, you know? I've got an eye for that sort of thing. Of course. Her expression droops slightly. I'm not so good at it myself. Ah, uh, I'm sure that's not true. Oh, it's true. I met this guy once. We got along really great, but it turns out he was younger than me. And that was kind of weird, but not terribly so. What was really weird was that he disappeared one day, and I've not seen him since then. Huh. That does seem kind of odd. Doesn't it? I hope it wasn't something I did. I feel compelled to reassure her. I'm sure it wasn't. I tried to try and calm her down further, but the both of us jump in surprise at the ringing suddenly coming from my pocket. Yuko sighs to steady herself as I pull the phone from my pocket. I feel a little sheepish for indirectly causing the incident. Emmy, what's up? Oh, thank God, I haven't called your phone before, so I didn't know if this number would work or whether you would pick up, and I can't... Whoa there, Emmy, slow down. What's wrong? There's a pause on the other side of the line, during which I can hear Emmy trying to control her breathing in order to calm down. Something's got her terribly agitated, and it's starting to agitate me. Can you just... can you stop by? Like, now or shortly after now? I really, really need to talk to you. There's a tone of pleading in the last sentence that I don't think I've ever heard from her. Of course, I'll be right there. Hold steady, okay? In my increasingly agitated state, I've apparently started saying things that don't quite make sense. Okay, I'll be okay. See you soon. I press the button to end the call before slipping the phone back into my pocket, apologizing to Yuko for running off and run off. Perhaps at some point I would have stopped to think about the time, or how suspicious it, or how suspicious it looks for a guy to enter the girls' dorm at this hour. Except right now, I'm just concerned with getting to Emmy and finding out what's wrong and how I can help her. I knock on the door and am greeted by a subdued come in. Something's very long. Ugh. Something's very wrong as I stare at the scene before me. Emmy's there, yes, but she's in a wheelchair, and her legs are missing. I glance around the room and see them sitting in a corner, looking like they've been thrown there. Emmy responds to my entrance with a lopsided grin. I was both pleased to see me and completely, utterly heartbroken. Hi, Sal. It looks like she's been crying, but if she was, she stopped now. I notice that I'm a little out of breath, having taken the stairs two at a time in order to get here. My heart doesn't seem to mind the strain, though. I file this happy fact away for later consideration. Like when I'm not done staring at what, uh, like when I'm not staring somewhat dumbstruck at my girlfriend in a wheelchair. Realizing I've still not responded to her greeting, my brain lurches into gear. Emmy, what happened? I guess I should have listened to you, Hisao. My leg's got a nasty infection. I'm not allowed to run at it for at least a couple of weeks. She gives a better laugh that shouldn't be coming from her. <laughs> I can't even walk on it. I could have used a crutch and kept one of my legs, but I didn't see the point. Why hop when you can't run on one leg? At least this way I can still, I don't know, roll fast or something. Y yeah, that's good, right? My awkward attempt to look on the bright side seems appreciated, but not really effective. I mean, shrugs again. It's just kind of a nuisance. I mean, we can't even eat up on the rooftop now. No wheelchair access. Yeah, but that's not a big deal, right? I mean, we can still eat together, and that's the, and that's the important thing. That lopsided grin again. It hurts to look at. I suppose so, yeah. But like I said, it's a nuisance. I mean, I haven't really used a wheelchair in... She thinks for a minute. Maybe seven years? Something like that anyway. A long time. I'm afraid I'm a bit out of practice. Well, fortunately, it's only temporary, right? Emmy nods. Oh, yeah, of course. It's not like I've lost him permanently. But it's a pain in the ass all the same. I nod sympathetically. There's not much else I can do after all. What am I going to say? I told you so? Although, I did tell her to get that leg looked at. But by the time I noticed, it was too late anyway. Do you need help with anything? Uh, 
That is, can I help you with anything? Emmy shakes her head, and there's a bit of a casual grin back. Nah, I can manage fine by myself. Although, if you want to help me to my, over to my bed, it would save me the trouble of rolling over there myself. I blush in spite of myself. Emmy giggles. You're such a prude, Sal. I'm not a prude. I just wouldn't want to take advantage of a young woman such as yourself. It's ungentlemanly. I wheel Emmy's chair to her bed and easily scoop her up and deposit her there. She quickly sorts herself out and sits on the side. She's actually a, lot heavy, a little heavier than she looks. It would be rude of me to observe this out loud, of course. Man, you're kind of heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Emmy hits me with the pillow. Ass. Just saying is all. Must be all that running. At the mention of running, Emmy's grin falters slightly. <laughs> well, I guess I won't have to worry about that for a bit, huh? Maybe I'll lose some weight. That's what you do to lose weight, right? She's physical activity. I'm pretty sure that's what the nurse would recommend. Speaking of which, are you still going to be showing up in the mornings? I'd hate to run a look. Ah, oh, shit. Emmy's sudden interjection, more disquieted muttering than anything to profane, causes me to look over in shock. She's leaning forward, trying to cover the fact that she's crying by, c by covering her eyes with her hand. Of course, the subdued sobbing makes it pretty obvious that she's crying. Hey, I'm sorry. Forget I said anything, okay? I place a hand gingerly around her and pull her close. I can think of nothing else to say or do. How do you comfort someone who's just lost their legs again? Emmy wraps me in a hug and stays that way for a while. Sorry. I'm pretty bad at this whole comf I'm pretty bad at this whole comforting thing, I guess. Don't say that. I'm fine, really. Her voice is slightly muffled by my chest. I pat her head reassuringly. That's that's the spirit, right? You'll get through this fine. I know it. Besides, I'm here to help you, remember? Emmy lifts her head and stares at me with tear-stained eyes. Can you? Can you really? She's grinning lopsidedly, and something sparkles on her gaze. I can't tell if I'm being mocked or not. <laughs> of course. Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, you are a bit heavy, but... <clears throat> My witty comment is cut off by the sudden press of Emmy's lips on mine. I'm caught off guard, and I'm rewarded by hitting my head on the wall behind her bed. Ow. Emmy pulls back, trying to look concerned, rather than like she's about to laugh. Are you okay? Sorry. I rub my hand ruefully, my head ruefully, and grin back at her. Caught me off guard there. Is that going to become a habit? Am I going to be lectured by she's and Misha more? At the mention of the duo, Emmy giggles. Honestly, those two. If I didn't know why, I'd be utterly confused as to why she hangs around with someone so bossy. Which one are we talking about? You know exactly which one he's Sal. Misha's hardly bossy. So what's the reason then? Huh? The reason why Misha hangs around she's and I. Emmy waves my question off with a smile. <laughs> no idea. I see. Anyway, you seem to be forgetting the original question, don't you? Oh, yeah, I guess I am. You wouldn't mind giving a guy like uh you wouldn't mind giving a guy a little warning, would you? Otherwise I'm liable to wind up with a concussion. I emphasize the point by rubbing at the back of my head. Emmy Googles madly. <laughs> you could wear a helmet. Some some kids here do, you know. Or I could just take revenge. I grab a pillow from beside me and whack Emmy over the head. <laughs> Emmy topples off the bed and lands on the floor with a thump. Her arms promptly reappear on the bed, and she manages to pull herself back up. She really has a surprising amount of strength in that little body. Her face is turned downwards and away from mine, making me think I might have accidentally hurt her. Emmy, you okay? Uh, you didn't hit your... A hand shoots up and grabs my collar. She pulls me in a sharp tug, her face now barely an inch away from mine as she grins cheekily. Emmy? She gives me a sharp headbutt. Our foreheads make quite a loud thud. <laughs> Bruh. I sit back and rub my now sore head as Emmy smirks victoriously. How's that for revenge? No fair. You can't just take revenge for revenge. For someone missing most of her legs, Emmy's surprisingly agile. I swipe at her, but she definitely rolls out of the way and lands a hit with her pillow. Of course, the odds are against her. I can stand up for starters. Oof. Poggers, poggers. Ah, oh my god. Guess I can't, after all. Emmy seems to have effectively tripped me up. And is now sitting, sitting primely astride me as I lay on my back. I'm not even sure how she managed it. I win! <laughs> I win! Her eyes twinkle mischievously. I've been thoroughly defeated, 
and by a girl that's a fraction of my size at that. Then again, being defeated doesn't seem quite so bad. And me being positioned over my waist isn't something that I, or my body, can ignore easily. I open my lips to speak, but Emmy's head darts downwards before I can get so much as a word out. I give no resistance as she presses her mouth to mine. Not that I'd want to. This is different somehow. She pulls back, nips at my lower lip, and reinitiates the embrace. Her tongue darts inside my mouth, exploring. I can feel the warmth spreading throughout my body as my heart begins to beat faster. My mind starts to go foggy, and I become vaguely aware of my hand traveling up Emmy's blouse. Emmy gasps as I reach a breast. And there's a giggle, and then I stare up at a grinning Emmy. <laughs> Told ya, that makes my second win now. What? That doesn't count. You use feminine wiles. <laughs> All's fair in love and war, right? <laughs> You're even blushing. I didn't know you were a blusher, Hisao. You were blushing too, you know. Probably because of your prudish ways. Even I've got to admit this is a stupid thing to say who, to a woman who's currently straddling me, and has been up to a few seconds ago, playing tonsil hockey with me. A prude, am I? Well then, let's see who blushes first, shall we? I'm not sure whether the tone of her voice terrifies or arouses me, but that question is quickly made rather moot. What the- Whoa! 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 Oh my fuck! Holy shit! Okay, okay. Holy- What? In a motion of practiced ease, she peels her blouse off and tosses it carelessly to the side. Her bra and shirt follow it quickly to the floor. Ha! I fight the urge to blush. It's a rather hard task. Escalation, is it? My own shirt follows sweet, albeit with some difficulty thanks to my position. I mean, mock yawns. You'll have to try harder than the- Ah! Uh? Whoa. My hands gently caress Emmy's bare skin, causing her to shiver. It would seem that my hands are acting on their own again. If our position had let me, I'd probably have finished her undressing for her. I started to say something about how Emmy's starting to blush, but both of us are very rapidly reaching the edge of something very, very barely holding us back. Conversation grinds to a halt, and I feel my arms losing energy. Neither of us, however, is prepared for this sudden new sensation. An indescribable heat surges through me, coming from both myself and, it seems, Emmy as well. With my one hand on my chest to steady herself, and another holding mine to make sure that I can't that I can't have my way with her body again, she looks quite pleased with herself. And then after a moment's hesitation, she moves. And she moves again. And again. And she moves. As she moves, Emmy's breath hitches. My breathing is starting to become faster and more raggedly as well. Emmy's body shivers and shudders against mine. And I can feel her starting to lose her balance. It must be hard for her to keep steady because she's missing her legs. I steady her as best as I can, cupping my hands around her backside. It's firm and taut. Makes sense considering how much she runs. The potential power in those muscles makes them flex as she responds to my touch. What I fail to take into account is the fact that my attempts to steady at me kind of slides her forwards, and, well, it feels amazing. Her panties slide easily against my trousers, and it doesn't take us long to figure out a rhythm. But Emmy refuses to keep to it, going now fast, now slow, now pausing for what feels like an eternity. I'm not sure whether she's doing this to toy with me, or if it's to make her feel better, but I'm well past caring. The heat between us is growing more intense, and I can't hold back a gasp. The noise only seems to drive Emmy along. I begin to punctuate her movements with some of my own, which causes her modest breast to bounce in time with my movements. Her breath begins to come faster as we continue, my own breathing becoming equally quick. With her eyes closed, her lips pursue expectantly. I just manage to lift myself up for a few moments, our mouths seeking one another, her chest sliding against mine as our sweat mingles. As I flop back down, my trousers are soaked with, wet, with sweat. I would take them off if, if it didn't mean stopping what we were doing, and I don't want to stop what we're doing. Stop this growing pressure, this tickling in the back of my brain. Emmy sliding is, Emmy is sliding faster and faster, panting heavily her voice seemingly unable to convey what she's feeling. Her body, on the other hand, is doing a fine job. Suddenly, she moves a little more erratically as my own breath hitches in my throat, ending in a final desperate thrust that sends me over the edge and into a surging feeling that I didn't know existed. My mind blanks, fills with, night with white noise, and I succumb to the feeling of climax. For a few seconds, everything else in the world falls away except for this amazing feeling of Emmy and I, together. 
and then it passes. The white noise clears, and I'm left staring up into the eyes of the girl atop me. For a few minutes, neither of us speaks. The sound of our breathing fills the room, our chests heaving from the experience. She eventually, reluctantly shifts off me, and sits against the wall. I join her. So, did I blush? I didn't notice. <laughs> did I? Emmy shrugs, still breathing a little heavily. <laughs> didn't notice either. Well, maybe we should... I need to use your window. My first instinct is to hide, but then I realize that I'm utterly exhausted and sitting next to a topless Emmy, so there's no running away. <laughs> uh, well, um... <sighs> Rin's eyes pass over Emmy and me, and focus on the window. There was a cloud. A cloud? Rin nods. I was watching it from my window, but it didn't stay in my window. So I need to use your window. Emmy shifts a little, causing me to cough in order to cover up a giggle of my own. How long do you need to use the window for? We're, uh, busy. This time I can't contain my laughter. Rin ignores both Emmy and me and peers out the window. Her shoulders slump and she looks disappointed. Hmm. It changed into something else. Disappointing. Emmy's having trouble keeping a straight face. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Rin. Could we have a little privacy now, please? Rin shrugs as if to say, can you? And hooks her foot around the door, pulling it closed behind her. We both dissolve into raucous laughter, unable to deal with Rin's bizarrely timed visit any other way. After our laughter dies down, I look at Emmy. We're both a total mess. Well. Emmy raises an eyebrow. Well? Again? Emmy grins and laughs, and then she nods. We should probably ditch the clothes this time. Yo! What the fuck? Dang! Okay. Oh! Let me save. Let me save, let me save. Okay, we just fucking, whoa, that escalated so quickly. I mean, I figured it was going to get there eventually, right? But dang, they just went straight to fucking, huh? Uh, I was not expecting that at all. I'm not going to lie. I guess that's why they had a disable adult content filter, huh? But I am not disabling that. So, you know what, you guys? In enjoy the censoring, right? Enjoy the censoring. Okay then, well. <laughs> I don't I don't know what to say to that, to to be completely honest. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, that would be awesome if you could leave a like on it. And if you are looking forward to um the future relations between Hisao and Emmy, or if you're interested in the future voyages of this channel then uh, I would recommend you hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you can be notified when a new video comes out. Which, if you wanted to follow this series, I highly recommend. Um, and that'll be it for this time. See ya. <laughs> Don't rain on me.